Hi, I'm Jeff Hajek, the owner and founder of Election. This video is part of my lean training system. It was originally released as a DVD a long time ago, but times have changed and the look of some of these LTS videos is now a bit dated. The content is still spot on though. So rather than just discontinue the line, I am posting the majority of each of the 36 videos here with the remainder available at Velaction Videos. That's our video service where you can download a wealth of supporting content and watch subscriber only videos. I recommend subscribing and hitting the notification button if you want to make sure you don't miss any new content. I would also really appreciate if you would hit the like button if this video is helpful and you want to see more content similar to it. The like button helps us get found on YouTube, but it also lets us figure out where you want us to put our future effort. Now enjoy the free version of this video. Welcome to Velaction Continuous Improvement's overview presentation on VOC, or the voice of the customer. I am Jeff Hajek, the owner and founder of Velaction. This video is part of our Lean Training System. It provides you with an a la carte approach to building continuous improvement skills. No matter what your training needs are, you'll be able to customize a solution from our extensive range of training modules. I always try to start off each presentation by covering what I would like you to take away from this material. The first thing, as you would probably imagine, is to learn what VOC actually is. I also want you to get a good feel for all the different ways that your customers, both internal and external, will connect with you. We will talk a bit about how companies manage their VOC work. And, because we are dealing with continuous improvement, we will talk about how to use the information you get from VOC to make your processes better. Let's start out by taking a look at an actual example of how companies have listened to their customers to help a product evolve. A long, long, long time ago, listening to music was not quite as sophisticated as it is today. At that time, though, something like the 8-track tape was cutting edge. At some point, though, customers expressed a need for something better. A few evolutions of product later, people were walking around with music strapped to their hips, and the 8-track tape became obsolete. Though this technology is laughable when stacked up against modern equipment, at the time, the Sony Walkman was state-of-the-art. Well, it was until the Discman came out, anyway. People did not specifically request a portable compact disc player, though. What they complained about was the fact that they had to fast-forward and rewind to find what they wanted, and that the music had poor sound quality. The engineers are the ones that figured out how, exactly, to deliver those improvements. And customers were quite satisfied with this new technology. For a while, anyway. If you check your pockets, I'm betting that most people listening to this presentation will find something similar to this device on the screen. How did a smartphone come about? As people grew accustomed to the portable compact disc player, they started to complain. They wanted more music. They hated the skipping. Compact discs were easily scratched. So MP3 files were developed, leading to early MP3 players. Apple entered the market with the iPod, which eventually turned into the iPhone. But just like all the people owning the products earlier in this evolution, we will quickly become dissatisfied with the product we are using. That pressure for better products shows no signs of letting up. That means that 10 or 15 years from now, this chart will have a few more products on it, and the iPhone will be somewhere in the middle of the product evolution. We don't know right now what the new products will be, but you can bet that tech companies the world over are listening to all of our complaints about our smartphones, and they are already trying to come up with the next great thing. I hope you are getting something valuable out of this video. If you want to get more out of this program, we recommend watching it on Velaction Videos. You'll be able to watch the entire video, mostly ad-free, and view subscriber-only programs. You'll also have access to a load of continuous improvement downloads. So if you understood why those products evolved the way they did, you have a pretty good gut feel for the voice of the customer. Now, a fairly formal definition of VOC is that the voice of the customer is the aggregate of all the different ways a customer will communicate with a company. That includes both overt and subtle messages. It also includes both positive and negative opinions. 
But when you boil it right down, there are generally only two reasons, and that is two main reasons, that customers give feedback to a company. The first is that they tell you what you're doing wrong. And the second is that they want something. This could be something as direct as placing an order, or something less obvious, such as a customer making a comment in passing to a repair tech. While the range of purposes behind a customer's communication with a company is fairly narrow, there are many, many channels for the communication between companies and their customers. These methods fall into four main categories, which we can show on this grid. On one side, we can break down communication by whether a company is actively seeking contact with a customer or whether they're just sitting back and listening to what the customer is saying. On the other axis of this grid, we distinguish between numerical, cold, hard facts and the more emotional, opinion-oriented communication. In this quadrant, we actively go out and seek numerical information. We're collecting facts. If we want to get more open-ended information, the company will go out and ask people their opinions. When we just sift through the information that is already available, we are data mining. And finally, it is important to teach ourselves to pay attention to the information that is constantly circulating around the increasingly connected, social media-oriented world. Many people who see the headline, Who is the Customer?, think there is a pretty simple answer. In truth, the concept of customer is not as clear-cut as it might seem on the surface. What if I ask you who the customer is for this box of fruity cereal? The majority of people eating this fruity cereal are not the same people who pulled out their wallets. But both people had input into the purchasing decision. In a business-to-business -business environment, you often have an initiator who is the person that decides that he or she wants something. The gatekeeper has veto authority. They might be a low-level supervisor or an administrator who is making sure that the transaction meets all the corporate rules. An influencer is a person who holds sway in the decision-making process. Their input can significantly affect the product selection and whether the purchase is even made. The decider is a final approval authority. This is the person who signs off on the purchase. And in many cases, none of these people are the ones who will actually be using the product. With so many hands in a cookie jar, it is easy to see how there may be competing agendas when making a purchase. In the cereal decision, parents might want a healthy choice, while one child is focused on the taste and another prioritizes whether there is a toy in the box. In a business-to-business -business environment, things get even more convoluted. An engineer may be looking for a part with optimal specifications. A marketing expert may want a less perfect component with a stronger brand name. And a purchasing agent may prefer working with a company that has a streamlined ordering process. Furthermore, in a lean organization, you may also have pressure to use flexible suppliers who will customize packaging and delivery options to restock components directly on an assembly line. Pleasing all the people in the decision-making process can be a monumentally challenging task. The situation gets even more complicated when you have layers of resellers in the mix. Manufacturers have to balance the needs of wholesalers, retailers, and end-users when they try to meet their customers' needs. As part of the lean training system this video comes from, we offer a variety of lean LEGO training packages. These include our Lean LEGO Flow Simulation, Mistake Proofing or Pokey Oak Lean LEGO Exercise, and our Visual Controls and 5S Lean LEGO Exercise. We've also got an Office Flow Simulation for those not implementing continuous improvement on the shop floor. Click the links in the description below or click on cards that pop up on this video to learn more. We'll also add links at the end. In addition to the different people involved in making a decision, the market for a particular product is often fragmented. Let's take a look at the different requirements of a variety of types of customers for a laptop computer. There are several different requirements that may go into an individual's purchasing decision. Keep in mind that while most people might like all of these, they may not be willing to pay for all of them. 
On top of the cumulative expense for all the laptop features, there is often a performance trade-off between requirements. A fast computer, for example, may have noisy fans to cool it or have a short battery life. For a laptop computer, a manufacturer may segment their customers in this manner. And each segment would have its own unique set of needs. Of course, many of these needs would overlap. The takeaway here is that all customers are not the same. Having a clear understanding of what each group wants opens up a lot of options. Companies can look at the cost of pleasing each segment and focus on those that are going to be the most profitable. Let's circle back to the grid of categories of VOC and dive into each of them. There are many ways to reach out to customers and get information. The key here is to get actual quantifiable facts. The less arbitrary the facts are, the better. Keep in mind that many of these entail turning an opinion into a number. Most of you are familiar with the Likert scale, even if you don't recognize it by name. It is the type of question where you are given a number for each level of the response from worst to best. The values can then be tallied and turned into an actionable number. One strategy to use is to make people choose from between multiple options. Asking how important each factor is might yield all top values. If you ask them to choose the three most important, respondents have to prioritize. The most important thing to keep in mind here, though, is not to let your data fall into a black hole. If you spend the time and effort collecting information, make sure you use it. Like fact collecting, opinion gathering takes active effort. The difference is, though, that opinions are not as precise as facts. You can know, to a relative degree of certainty, the number of people in a city that own dogs. What is less precise, though, is asking them why they prefer dogs over cats. That doesn't mean that this type of information is unimportant. You gain tremendous insight from asking open-ended questions. If you just rely on the numbers, you are seldom surprised by aha moments. Those come more frequently when you give an open platform for people to talk. Opinion gathering, however, can be expensive, especially if you hire people to do this work. It takes a lot of skill and experience to ask questions the right way. Ask them incorrectly and you'll end up biasing the outcome. A passive way to get information is data mining. This does not mean that there's no work involved. What it means is that you are letting the customer information come to you rather than going out and seeking it from them. Much of this information is stored in your company's computers. The calls people make to your call center or the questions they ask in the support section of your website, and of course, warranty data, are treasure troves that can help you find out about the problems your customers are facing. For example, sifting through sales data can enlighten you if there are regional preferences for different product configurations, which would lead to more effective targeted marketing. Most of these sources of data are specific to your company. There are also external sources of information that you can harvest as well. Demographic information comes to mind. The biggest concern with data mining is that people change the questions they need answered based on the data that is readily available. If the right data is there though, data mining is extremely cost effective. This final category of communication is taking an ever increasing role in voice of the customer. Social media is the biggest reason for this. Now, more than ever, customers can communicate with other customers about how a company is performing. Retail websites have product reviews. Many people filter by the number of stars a product has. Websites such as Yelp also provide a conduit for customers to talk to companies, albeit indirectly. In addition to social media, there is a lot more media in general. Every magazine and newspaper now has an online presence. Bloggers are everywhere. Video channels provide yet another source of commentary about your company. In the past, print media was isolated. Now everything is online and it's searchable. That's good news for you in that you can find what people are saying about you much more easily. 
It's also bad news because negative comments are also readily available to everybody. The big takeaway is that there is a wealth of information available to you if you just listen for it. We've covered a lot about what VOC is and the different ways that it is collected. Now let's talk about how to put it to use. VOC starts with customers letting you know about their perception of your products and services. It is up to your company, though, to distill that information down. You've got to interpret it and turn it into something useful, something actionable. This is where you make or break your VOC efforts. If you misinterpret your customer, you'll never get the product right. As you interpret those perceptions, you eventually turn them into customer requirements. Going back to the music player example from earlier, I mentioned that your customer is not likely to tell you exactly what they want. They might tell you that they want more portable music than the 8-track player provides. It is up to the company to determine whether this means a large player that can be heard by a crowd or a small player with headphones. Those requirements become specifications for the engineering team. Light becomes 18 ounces. Long battery life becomes X milliamp hours or X minutes of use. Clear audio becomes some measure of frequency response or sensitivity. The point is that vague requirements become a specific technical specification that can be turned into a design. The company then takes action based on those design specs. In some cases, they try to redesign the product to keep it up to date. In other instances, they will remarket it to a different segment. They may also assess the profitability and decide to kill off a product line. The point is that good companies do something with the new specs. And that action completes the cycle and it starts all over. VOC is never done. Almost as soon as the latest and greatest item is released, customers are already thinking about what they want added to it. This video comes from Velaction's Lean Training System, which takes a module-based approach to learning about continuous improvement. Modules include a PowerPoint presentation and student guides for every video, plus there are many exercises and quizzes as well. There's also a whole host of supporting content in the form of terms in our Continuous Improvement Companion and downloadable articles. Our modules are currently available in our store and as downloads at Velaction Videos. Click the links in the description below or click on the cards that pop up on this video to learn more. We'll also add links at the end. I'd like to point out here that while VOC is continuous, meaning that the customer is always sending information out into the world, your company will likely take on discrete VOC projects to deal with problems or to come up with new ideas for new products. These projects usually involve teams. The steps here are what you would see when taking on a VOC project. Keep in mind that this presentation is an overview of the VOC process. You will not become an expert on a subject by watching a short video such as this. Becoming good at it will take extensive education and experience. That said, there are two big things we want you to get from this presentation. The first is that we want you to understand what your marketing team is doing and what they're up against. The second is that we want you to be able to do some of these tasks for your internal customers as you run your operation in a lean manner. When you start on a VOC project, you are trying to close a gap in your knowledge. The best way to do it is to frame that gap as a question. What one feature would customers kill to have added to our product? What are the main reasons that customers who researched our product eventually decided to purchase from someone else? Or, within your own operation as, say, a lean manager, what is the biggest problem I am causing my downstream customer? When you ask these questions, pay attention to the final thought in the bullet point. You should not pose these questions if you already have answers in mind. To avoid creating extra work for yourself, once you know what you're looking for, take some time to see what information is already available. If you are on a marketing team, there's a good chance that another product manager has already sought out some of the same information that may be helpful to you. If you are working within a lean operation, there is likely some metrics data that your company is already collecting that may support your efforts. 
The obvious task that follows is to think about what information you still need to answer your question. With that knowledge, you should have more clarity into understanding who needs to be on your team. In many cases, there will be some obvious candidates. Understanding the gaps in knowledge often highlights other people that should be on the team that you may not have initially thought of. With a team formed, your data gaps identified, and an understanding of what you need to know, the logical next step is to make a plan on how the group is going to go about getting their questions about the customer answered. That plan will most likely start by gathering all of the information you need. You will include some assortment of the methods we talked about earlier from the grid about how companies communicate with customers. Obviously, you will look the data over and finish up by identifying customer requirements. One important point here. Customers will ask for everything. It is only when you add constraints that you are able to determine what is most important. The holy grail here is figuring out the requirements that your customers will pay the most for that also cost you the least. So, your marketing team has an important balance to strike. There is a cost to collecting data about customers. Obviously, the marketing team will be doing some work on their own and will be spending money from their budget to hire outside people to get the information they need. There's also costs to the customer. Their time is valuable. They don't want to be bothered. The more you contact them, except in extreme cases where there is a very close relationship with them, the less effective your communication will be. You, as a member of a company focusing on continuous improvement, may also be involved in VOC efforts from time to time. Anything you do to support VOC means you're not doing something else. The total cost does not matter, though, if it is greatly outweighed by the benefit. The cost... Thanks for watching this extended free version of our Lean Training System module video. If you want to watch the whole video, check it out at Velaction Videos. If you want to make sure you don't miss the next LTS video that we post, please be sure to subscribe down below. We also always appreciate likes as it helps us get viewed more and makes us keep adding additional content. Thanks for watching and best wishes on your continuous improvement journey.